everything you you there's everything you want and a whole lot you don't want uh, without a doubt but anyway we had a good time over there there you i was trying to give you time to find hosea okay you're there good now that you found hosea what you need to do is find galatians chapter six all right and you need hosea in one hand galatians chapter six in the other hand and um uh, between these two passages of scripture, I, I'll preach to you this morning on the whirlwind of harvest, all right? The whirlwind of harvest uh, between Hosea chapter 8 and Galatians chapter 6. So if you got those, we're in good shape. Before we do it, uh, not in a hurry, you know, we hear of, uh, we hear of the Zika virus, right? You heard that Zika virus? I, I, a mosquito-borne uh, virus that's causing a lot of problems a lot in, in children and newborn children, a lot of uh, developmental problems and birth defects. And, you know, we hear about that. And if we're not careful, we hear about it and we think, thank God it's not here at least yet. Right. But I want to read this to you. One of our pastor's daughter, who is seven months pregnant, came down with the Zika virus. Her name is Andrea and she needs our prayer. As many have heard on the news, this virus can cause microcephaly. She will know in a few weeks if the baby has been affected. We all have several other ladies who are also pregnant. You said, where is that? Every year, Brazil has thousands of people who get dengue, malaria, chikungunya, and Zika. See, this is our missionary brother, Tim Hawkins, down in Brazil. You know, sometimes, I, I'll be honest, every time when I heard of uh, the earthquake, I immediately yes, think sir. missionaries, Amen. missionaries. When I, I hear of Zika virus and I, I see where it's at, I think about boys, our, our missionaries Amen. and their people. And, and they're down there, pastor's daughter, and seven months pregnant, comes down with that. Folks, listen, don't get uh, the view that, well, it, it, it ain't affecting me. There's some people that it is affecting. Oh, yeah. And they need your prayer. I hope you'll pray for them, all right? And don't forget that. There's a lot of things going on in this world that may not affect you individually, but they do affect other people, and they need our prayer. So I hope you'll do that. You got Hosea chapter 8, all right? Verse 7. Verse 7. Hosea chapter 8, verse 7. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. Amen. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind, and hath no stalk. The bud shall yield no meal. If so be it yield, the stranger shall swallow it up. I want you to notice that. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. You say, that's Old Testament. Good, go to the New Testament. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Amen. Life everlasting. Uh, here it is, springtime in Texas. Yes, and springtime in Texas is really the time where we have a tendency to get those storms that can produce tornadoes. Now, we know they can happen any time of the year. We had a real bad outbreak this past December, but springtime is usually the time it comes, and... Uh, Brother Dennis was telling me this morning, he said, man, that storm Friday night turned my, cut my electricity off, all right? And he said, I had to go outside and sit outside, got hot in the house, and uh, hey, we go through those storms. We, we listen to the news, we, we watch, and we, we wonder, is the, you know, that storm going to hit us? But springtime's also the time of the year where we, we do our planting, we do our sowing. Some of you maybe have put in new flower beds, some of you put in... Uh, gardens and those of you that put in gardens let me know when it's ready uh you know that's all i'm interested in I, there's a fellow down at our school right across the fence he's got a garden i said how's it going he said uh, you know pretty good i said you don't mind if i climb the fence when it gets ready do you and i uh, was talking to him and uh, uh you know but everything we we sow and everything that's sown the truth of the matter is we don't do that because i just love to dig in the dirt Right? That's not the reason we did. My, my dad used to have a garden, and uh, he had two, uh, two uh, helpers, Amen. my brother and I. Amen. And he always saw to it we volunteered. Uh, so 
he would volunteer us, would help him, and I never did get out there and think, boy, I just love digging in the dirt. Man, I love running the tiller. Uh, we'd run that tiller, and there's rocky ground out there, and, and the thing that ground grows best is rocks yes, sir. behind his house. And uh, we'd, we'd till it up one year, and I'd think we surely got all the rocks. And the next year we'd come back, and I'd be tilling, that old tiller hit a rock, it'd bounce you and the tiller and everything else. And so, uh, but I didn't do it because I thought, I just love to play in the dirt. The only reason I enjoyed it was because I looked forward to harvest. Right. Look forward to harvest. Well, our text speaks of the connection between sowing and reaping. Yeah. Sowing and reaping. Uh, man makes laws, and God makes laws. Right. Man makes laws that are sometimes ignored, oh. oftentimes disregarded, unfortunately. Our, our president has disregarded oh. some of the laws of the land, and and, and then sometimes they're eventually repealed. Sometimes laws are removed. Right. But man's laws can be ignored. Right. I want to tell you something. The law of God's not like that. Nope. The law of God's not like that. God's nope. laws, you can't repeal them. Nope. They're eternal. Right. They're eternal. And one of the laws that he's laid down is law of sowing and reaping. In Hosea chapter 8, he's talking specifically and especially to the nation of Israel. They had sown to the wind, the Bible says. They had sown to the wind. Now what they had done is they had sown uh, to the wind, if you will, of idolatry. And they were about to reap the whirlwind of the wrath of God. They were about to reap that. Now listen to me, all right? Man sows to the wind. He sows disobedience to the law of God the whirlwind of harvest is going to come through and he's going to reap all the destruction, all the disappointment, and all the devastation that that brings. You cannot escape it. I stand here this morning and I look out at you folks that are here today. I do not stand here and look at you and think, what a bunch of wicked sinners. No. I don't do that. Except for a few. No, I was just kidding. I don't look at you like that. I don't sit here and think, man, what a bunch of wicked people. But yet I do look at you and realize that it's possible for you, me, or any one of us here to sow. Yes, sir. It's possible for us to sow to the wind. Now I want to remind you this morning, very simple message, very simple message, four main thoughts, if you'll just stay with me, and I'll go quickly, and I will try to get to the end one quickly, and then we'll dwell there. Amen. You said, and how bad is it going to be? Not bad. Because really what I want to do is dwell on the positive. Amen. But you got to have the negative. Yes, sir. First of all, I want you to see this. You're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap what you sow. How simple is that? How simple is that? I mean, uh, those of you who planted gardens, you didn't go down and, and buy seed without knowing the seed you were buying. You knew what you were buying. You went down there and you bought the seed. Maybe, you know, if you're wise, you bought uh, some seed that would grow you some butter beans. That's wise, okay? If you're wise, you bought you some seed that would produce you some, some green beans or snap beans, if you will, all right? And uh, maybe if you've got the soil for it, watermelon. That's wise. That's wise, okay? Now, maybe you, you went out there and, and you said, well, I'm going to get me some uh, seed. I'm going to sow some seed. I want to grow Brussels sprouts. That's not wise. Okay, that, that wasn't wise. You need to be wise about what you're growing. Uh, you need to grow some tomatoes, all right? You need to grow some cucumbers. That, those are good things. And then you need to share them with your preacher, all right? Uh, those are good things. Uh, hey, but you bought seed in tent knowing, hey, I'm buying this seed because that's what I want to eat later on. And you were specific. You know that. You know, everybody understands that in the realm of nature. We, it, it's so easy, the, that principle of nature. Sure, you reap what you sow. But the thing that amazes me is God's people can act as if it's not true in the spiritual realm. We, we see God's people sometimes seem to think, well, I can sow disobedience and there won't be a problem. I can sow some disregard to the law of God and it really won't matter. 
or I can even disdain what God's book says and get away with it. You can't. You can't. You're going to reap what you sow. The Bible plainly teaches that to you and I. You, you can see it. Hey, you can see it in the lives of Bible characters. You can see it. We, we think about Lot. The man Lot. Now the truth of the matter is we think of Lot as a man that made a mess. But can I tell you something? Lot started out real good. Lot started out real good. He was doing real well. But you know what? He took a turn and he sowed some disobedience to the Word of God and the Word of God. He disregarded what God said. Hey, what happened? Well, he lost his family. Amen. Lost his wife. Man, when the whirlwind of harvest came along, Lot was devastated. Right. Devastated. Hey, you can count on him. You're going to reap what you sow. We could go on. There's a lot. We could talk about David. David thought his position could help him to escape the consequence of his sin. But you know what? The whirlwind of harvest swept through his life right. after that sin. Swept through his kingdom. It affected them. It affected his family. Yes, sir. Why? Because of his sin. Yes, his sin. You're going to reap what you sow, folks. Right. You're going to reap what you sow. I don't care who you are. Right. Hey, by the way, I don't care what your track record's been. No. You're still going to reap what you sow. Oh, yeah. You're still going to reap what you sow. And you be sure your sin will find you out. That's the Numbers 32, verse 23. Boy, what a verse. How true that is. You can be sure you're going to reap the effects of your sin. It's going to happen. And the second thing I want you to see, you always reap more than you sow. Right. You always reap more than you sow. Now listen, when you're planting a garden, that's a good thing. Man, I can remember it, you know, talking about planting a garden with Dad and everything. We'd get out there and we'd, we'd plant those uh, seeds and we'd plant those uh, pinto beans, you know, and... Uh, We'd go along that road and look at a couple here and get a little further, a couple here, a couple. And man, you know, we ate several good times off of those few that we planted. Because you always reap more than you sow. You always reap more than you sow. Can I say this to you, boy? That's true in the spiritual realm. That one night of sensual pleasure cost David years of heartache and heartbreak. Years of it. That one night. That one time. Because you always reap more than you sow. And we live in a day, though, where people think, I just have a little flame. You know? Okay? I can just take one night for a drunken party. I can just take one hit of heroin. One snort of cocaine. I don't know if those terms are right or not. Okay? I talked to my brother. I got that information from him. <laughs> or, or, you know, the truth of the matter is, I look out here and I'm... I hope I'm not looking at any of you that are on, thinking, Man, I just want to try that cocaine all my life. Just going to try. And I, I really don't think I'm looking at, you know, a bunch of drug abusers. But you know what? I'll never forget that uh, college basketball player, tremendously talented, tremendously talented college basketball player, tried the cocaine one night, one time, right before the draft, professional draft, killed him. Killed him. You see, you always reap more than you sow. Always reap more than you sow. Hey, but it's not that. Maybe we think it's just, just a little, we'll dabble a little bit with a much more acceptable sin. Hey, you know, I don't normally do this, but you know what I heard about so-and-so? Just a little bit of gossip. Just a little unkind word. Just that little thing. You say, come on, preacher, that's not that bad. Wait a minute. Is it against the law of God or not? We, we do things like that and we think, it won't be a bad thing. That, that's, that's, you know, I, I, just, I just can't help it. I've just got to tell somebody. And you don't know how much trouble you're going to cause. You, you heave that rock out there in the water and you don't know where that ripple's going to go to. You've got no idea. 
You think it might cost, but it's going to be a little bit. Doesn't work that way. Does not work that way. You can never tell. You can never tell how far the effects of your sin are going to spread. There's been plenty of people that have said some things and later on have said, well, I wish I could take those words back. Amen. But you can't. Mm -hmm. You never can. You never can. When you decide to pull that tongue out, turn it loose and crucify somebody, later on you regret it. But wait a minute, the damage is done. The damage is done. Hey, you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap more than you sow. Let me say this to you. You're going to reap where you sow. You say, what do you mean? Take your Bible to the book of Ezekiel. If you're still open at Hosea, just back up a little bit and you'll get to Ezekiel real quickly. Ezekiel chapter 16. There's a very interesting verse. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 44. Ezekiel 16, verse 44. Notice what the Bible said. Behold, everyone that useth Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying. Now here it is. As is the mother, so is her daughter. You say, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying what you sow in your family, you'll reap in your family. You'll reap it there. Hey, like father, like son, we've heard that. We've heard that say. Man, how many times have we seen that born out? How many times have we seen that born out? Hey, Dad, you better set a good example. You better set a good example. You see, you, you sow that seed, uh, that sin in your home, you're going to reap it in your family. Where you sow it is where you're going to reap it. Hey, we planted the garden in Dad's backyard. We planted the garden there. I didn't go to Brother Kelly's yard to reap, okay? When it was harvest time, we didn't go to his yard. We didn't do that. We, we reap right where we sow. That's where you're going to reap it. Hey, I believe you sow to your own flesh, you're going to reap it in your body. You're going to reap it in your body. There's this crowd, you know, that thinks I can abuse myself and have a good time and not pay a price. Boy, you're wrong. You're, you're going to find your body's racked by disease, by pain, by physical suffering. Hey, all of that can follow just one night of sin. Just one night of sin. Just one. That's all it takes. Hey, I've stood by the bedside of two quadriplegics that used to be in our youth department. They were in my youth department when I was a youth director. Both of them were quadriplegics after a wreck, and the wreck was caused by booze. You know what? They're still reaping the effects of that sin. Hey, you're going to reap where you sow. It's not going to be somewhere else. It's going to be right where you are. You reap it, and you sow that sin in the business world. You'll reap it there. You ever look around and consider sometimes, you know, that business was going strong, and all of a sudden it's, it's just, just destroyed, and it's gone. They were going so well. What happened? They reaped it. Their sin right there. I'm going to tell you something. There's an empty Mexican restaurant down here on Denton Highway now. And I believe it's empty because of where, what they sold. They were one of the restaurants that led the charge in Halton City for liquor by the drink. They had a small restaurant. Small restaurant. They were doing well. Grow it, man. They pushed for liquor by the drink. They opened this big restaurant, and man, it, it doubled their capacity. But now you go by there, the, the main thing there is weeds, right. empty parking lot. Say, so what happened? Hey, I'll tell you. You reap where you sow. You reap where you sow. God sees to it. That's true. Listen, you get out in the business world, all your colleagues turn against you when you sin against them. You reap where you sow. You can count on it, all right? Hey, you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap more than you sow. You're going to reap where you sow. But let me say this. You're going to reap when God says. Amen. You're going to reap when God 
says you reap. You don't make that decision. You don't make that. That's why a lot of people sit and think, I got away with it. I got away with it. You, you think that? Turn to Ecclesiastes, would you? Turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes. You know, I, it, it is amazing how much light there is in the Word of God. The Ecclesiastes, if you look there in, in chapter 8, right after Psalms is the book of Proverbs, after Proverbs, the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Amazing, amazing wisdom in the Word of God. Notice what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So I says, hey, I did it. I got away with it. I got away with it. You know what that means? I can do it again. I can do it again. Hey, uh, I, I went up to Windstar and, and just had a little bit of fun, you know. And, and man, he even came back with a little bit more than I went with. You know, the devil's setting his hook in you, all right? The devil's setting his hook in you. You think, I can do it again. It'll come out all right. Or even worse yet, you went and you didn't come out all right, but you said, you know what? I believe I've got it figured out now. I believe I've got it figured out. Hey, the Bible says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. But look at the next verse. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him, but it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days which are as a shadow because he feareth not before God. Hey, you're going to reap when God says you reap. You're going to reap when God sends the whirlwind. Hey, the nation of Israel got by a long time with their idolatry. For years and years and years they got by. But I want to tell you, one day the storm cloud grew up. One ground, one day that happened. And you never know when the storm of harvest is going to arrive in your life. You never know when that's going to take place. I marvel here in watching the news when we've got storms coming and uh, boy, they've got helicopters out and they're giving you live pictures of this wall cloud and they're saying, well, we haven't seen anything dip out of it yet. And now we've got the thunder truck that one of the TV stations has and they chase these storms down, you know, and get in the middle of them and want you to see it right there in person. And hey, I'll tell you what, you live your life and you think I'll ignore the law of God. You, you get ready, boy, one of these days you're going to see a cloud coming. You're going to see that cloud coming. And you're not going to know is the whirlwind of God going to drop out of that cloud or not Amen. to bring that time of reaping. But you mark it down, it will come. It will come. But you're going to reap when God says. Now I said I was going to preach real quick to get to the last spot. So here we are. You can reap. And you can sow what is right. And reap a reward. Would you go back with me to Galatians chapter six where we started all right go back there with me if you would galatians chapter six go back there with me once you look at verse eight you said preacher you always like to preach the negative no but i do like to warn you i do enjoy i want to warn you hey listen i had two kids you you that have children or have had them didn't you warn yours i spent most of my time warning mine Hey, you better not do that. Don't touch that. It's hot. Watch out. Watch where you step. Be careful. My dad and I always used to. When my brother and I, we were grown. And we, we lived at home a long time because we couldn't find anybody that would have us. All right? That's why. So we were at home a long time after that. And, and, and dad would, he, every time we'd leave, every time we'd leave, he'd say, now boys, be careful. Be careful. 
We were in our 20s. Boys, be careful. Now, nah, Dad, we're going to be careless tonight. We're just going wild, all right? Should you ever say that? Are you kidding? Of course I didn't say that, all right? I was only 20, and he was still alive, all right? So I didn't say that. But he always warned us. You know, I did that. I warned my children. I tried to point out to them, hey, listen, you do that. Hey, when I'd see other people doing wrong and my kids were with me, I'd say, you watch that. You see what's happening right there? You, you see that person right there? You know why it's like that with them? Here's why. Because of their sin. Because of their life. That's why they're in, that's why they're in this mess. That's why they're in this mess. I, I pointed out to them. I said, you know what? That guy right there on the corner with that scruffy looking beard and, and, he, and he's got his belongings in, in a, a shopping ba basket from Walmart. And he's sitting there on the curb with a brown paper sack. You can tell there's a bottle in it. He said he didn't get there accidentally. No, sir. Amen. He got there because they played the fool. That's right. I warned him. I warned him. Well, wait a minute. I'll tell you something. God tells us in verse 8 of uh, Galatians chapter 6. He said, For he that sowed to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And you mark her down. That's true. Amen. That's true. But can I point out to you the last part of this verse is also true? Yes, sir. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Yes. Now I want to ask you, what do you want to reap? Well, corruption sounds good to me. Really, you've got to be a moron, all right? Amen. Surely you don't mean that. You know, I, I've never, I've never talked to anybody that said, you know, preacher, I want to be a homeless person. <laughs> that is my goal in life. I want to be a homeless. I've never talked to anybody that said, you know, I, I've checked out all the careers. I, I've looked them all over. I want to be a wino. <laughs> I, would, I would really love to be a wino. You say, preacher, what are you trying to do? Be fine. No, I'm just telling you the truth. I've never heard anybody say that. But they got there because of reaping to the sowing to the flesh. Sowing to the flesh. You don't get there accidentally. That's not accidental. You, you don't become a drug addict accidentally. Don't do that. I was visiting in the jail downtown. One of my members, unfortunately. And I was down there. I'm serious. One of our church members in jail. And I went to see him. And while I was waiting, it, I'd gone up the elevator and I was there in the area waiting for him to bring him so we could talk on the phone through a glass. There was a young lady, trustee, who was a prisoner. She was in the jail and she was doing some cleaning. And I struck up a conversation with her and I, and I don't mind talking to people, don't mind asking questions. I said, why are you here? And she said, well, man, I have DWI. She said, I, I don't ever want to do that. I'm not going to do that again. That's never going to happen. I said, I'll tell you how never to make sure it never happens. I guarantee if you'll do what I say, it'll never happen again. She looked at me sincerely and she said, what? I said, don't ever take another drink. Isn't that simple? Have you ever found so many people so hard for them? That's so simple. I've never had to worry about becoming an alcoholic. Amen. Or a drunk, right? You can dress it up if you want to. I've never had to worry about that. You said, well, how'd you keep from it? I've never drank any alcoholic beverage. I'm not even like my cousin who was on a cruise. And he's, he's telling me about it later, and he said, they, they had these things there, and I, I was, they were, you know, and he said, I'm drinking. He said, man, that's pretty good. And his wife said, that's a cocktail, stupid. He said, oh. <laughs> you know, he had never been on a cruise. He didn't know it. His wife was a wino. She, no, I'm just uh, she just had a little more wisdom than he did. Right? She knew it. Hey, listen to me, all right? There's some things you don't have to worry about. If you'll sow to the Spirit. Amen. Sow to the Spirit. You know, what's wrong with sowing the life of honesty? Amen. Sow a life of honesty. You know what? You sow a life of honesty, you don't have to remember what you told because you just tell the truth. Don't have to remember. What a blessing, you know? What's wrong with sowing a life of integrity? What's wrong? How about sowing a life of godliness? 
I want to be what God wants me to be. Show a life of obedience to the Word of God. Show a life of faithfulness. Amen. I'm just going to be faithful. That's what I'm going to do. I, that's, the, that's what I'm going to show in my life. I'm going to show faithfulness. What are you going to read? Life everlasting. Amen. Life everlasting. I'm going to show truth. Yes, sir. Just going to show that truth. Man, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I like to read good things. Yeah. Right. I like to enjoy good things. And, and what a blessing it is to get those good things of life. Yeah. I can tell you how God's blessed me sometimes, man, just out of the blue. And it's little things. You think nothing of it. I, I remember I took a train trip one time from here to Chicago. And I was on that train trip. I was young, naive. I'd never been away much from uh, Fort Worth. And I'm going to Chicago and I'm on this train. And, uh, and you know, it's an all-night trip and half the next day, too. And... Uh, we stopped at every little place, so I went to the dining car for breakfast. And, and on the dining car, it's not like going in a restaurant. You're going to sit with somebody. Right. And it's not necessarily going to be somebody you know. And it just so happened, I sat down across the table from this uh, lady, and uh, she was probably maybe in her 50, something like that. And uh, she, she seemed to be a pretty nice lady, so I thought I could take a chance, you know, eating with another woman. All right. Uh, of course, at the time I wasn't married. I was single. And uh, but so I sat down there, and I we were eating, eating breakfast, you know, just just talking and talk to people, and uh, man, and, and nothing special, nothing happened. But you know what? In the meal, she paid for my meal. I didn't ask her to. Didn't expect her to. You said you should have paid for her. Okay. But I let her pay for mine. So why? I think it's a blessing from God. That's it. Yes, sir. Just God said, I'll, I'll take care of that. <laughs> the other night, uh, the other day, I was up at Joe's Pasta and Pizza, yeah. and uh, somebody paid for my meal there. Yeah. Now, I think I know who it was. I'm not positive. I didn't do it. Did I deserve that? No. But you know what? If you're nice to people, you might be surprised what happens. Right. You might be surprised what happens. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I bought people meals that I didn't know. I've been in a restaurant before, and I've looked over somebody, and I was kind of impressed with them, you know, and I thought, I'll just pay for their meal. I didn't tell them. I just paid for their meal. I said, hey, I want to pay for that meal right there. To those folks right just let me put that on my tab. You say, well, that's because you're rich. No, I'm not rich. But you know what I found? When you sow like that, yes, sir. it comes back to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It comes back to you. And listen, when you sow faithfulness to God, you can count on reaping the reward of God's blessing. God's blessing. You know, sometimes those whirlwinds can leave some good things along the line. Sometimes they can do some good things. And God wants to be a blessing to you. But He can if you're going to sow to the flesh. Because you're going to reap corruption. But you can sow to the Spirit and reap life everlasting. Very simply this morning, what are you sowing? Just what are you sowing in life? Bitterness, anger, frustration. What are you sowing? Hey, what's being sown in your home? What's being sown there? You know, I tell you what, I believe you can raise kids who got a pretty good outlook on life, pretty good uh, way in life, if you'll have it and show it to them at home. I believe it rubs off on them. I believe it rubs off on them. On the other hand, you, you can be the, the most difficult individual in the world to live with. Right. You're going to cause your kids a bunch of problems in life. Right. You can cause, it's up to you. It's up to you. All right? What are you going to sow? What are you sowing today? Hey, down there at the, the, at the job, yeah. what are you sowing? Oh, man, I have to do everything here. 
Everything falls on my back. And they don't pay me enough. They don't treat me right here. Now, can I say this to you? Every one of those words may be true. But go ahead and go like that and see if it helps. See if it changes anything. It might change one thing. might mean you don't have a job, all right? You see, I'm telling you, hey, you know what? What you sow matters. So what are you sowing? What are you sowing? What are you sowing for God? What are you doing for Him? You want God's blessing? Well, so to the Spirit. So to the Spirit. Would you stand, please, with every head bowed and every eye closed this morning? Hey, listen. The Bible's true. The Bible's true. You're going to reap what you sow. You can count on it. Hey, you know what? You may not finish the book you're reading. You may never get the house paid off you're living in. You may, you may never finish school. There's a lot of things you might not be able to finish, but I'm going to tell you something. You can count on it. You will reap what you sow in this whole world. That will happen. So what are you sowing? You know, rather than pray for a crop failure, why don't you decide, I think I'll change what I'm sowing. Amen. Maybe you need to come and pray and ask God to forgive you for what you've sown. Maybe you need to do business with him today. Hey, the altars are open. Would you come? Would you come and say, you know what? I'm going to change what's being sown in my life. Go make a difference. Heavenly Father, I pray you'd bless this morning the invitation. Lord, this is your time for God's people to do business with you. Lord, this is the time for the sinner to get right. This is the time for the lost to get saved. This is the time, Lord, for the child of God to come back to you and seek forgiveness. Lord, this is the time for lives to be changed. Lord, don't let us waste the invitation time today. Help us to use it. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Help people to move that you deal with. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.